guys, Sam from Hot Mess Homeschool Mom with you here again today. And I know it's been a while. I haven't put up any videos lately for that. I am truly sorry. Um, I Christmas, <laughs> can't wait for it to be over. It's been chaotic here, uh, like I mentioned in my last video, but I wanted to take a few minutes and uh, talk to you guys about something that I've been doing a little bit of research on. Um, some of you may know from watching my previous posts that I truly, really believe in um, self-development and constantly reading and staying on top of new trends or ideas in education and really making sure that I am um, developing myself uh, and teaching myself so that I can be the best educator to my child. Children, uh, two, still have two. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share some of the things that I've been reading on and, and really, really digging into. And the more I go down this rabbit hole the, and the more information I find, um, the more convinced I am that this is so crucial and, and such a missing component of not only today's modern education system, the public school system, whatever in general, um, but in but in maybe in homeschooling too. Um, you know, I'm starting to see bits and pieces of it pick up uh, in the circles that I'm in, or again the things that I'm reading, the blogs I'm reading. Um, so it is it is picking up in popularity. But one of the th the, the thing I want to talk to you about today is um, problem solving, and how crucial problem solving is in education today. Uh, considering the fact that we have a group of children whose world is going to look completely different than ours in just a few few short years um, and it's critical that we are empowering them and teaching them to learn in a way that they can then be the problem solvers and be adaptable um, when it's their turn in the professional world. We wanna make sure they're at the top of their game and that they are the ones um, that are in, not only in high demand, but are forging new um, frontiers in, in whatever our future may look like. Uh, and it's really important that, that we invest in these kids because it's our future too. And uh, we wanna make sure we have some uh, really good thinkers out there. So, um, as a homeschooling parent, or even if you're, even if you have children in the public school and, and you happen to be watching this, um, there are ways that I'll, I'll discuss that you can probably implement implement this or supplement whatever your children are learning in school and adapt this problem solving mindset in your own homes. Um, I'm gonna try to focus it more towards homeschooling parents, but there, obviously, that's that's my audience. You guys are who I'm talking to, um, but I know I have some followers that are also uh, have children in the public school and want more for their kids, and that's. Excellent. That's what you what you want. So, um, this problem solving ties in a little bit with some of the other videos I've I've put up recently, or the pieces I've written recently, um, especially in terms of growth mindset. Uh, growth mindset is huge uh, in terms of problem solving and having the right frame of mind um, when you encounter something difficult. Um, how do you go about? fixing whatever said problem is. So growth mindset is huge and, and ties in really nicely with problem solving, um, but also philosophy to, to some extent. I mean, uh, Karl Popper, who is one of the most influential philosophers of the 20th century, basically, well, he did say all of life is problem solving. Um, I mean, he's quoted saying that. So it's true. If you look at your life, if you look at anything you do, um, it requires problem solving, whether it's, you know, how am I gonna get the dishes done today? Or how am I gonna, you know, coordinate someone to watch the kids while I run out and grocery shop? Whatever it may be, we as humans are faced with thousands of problems we have to solve lickety split every single day. And um, it's important we teach our kids how to, how to solve them. And not only just instead of being reactionary, um, being, proactive and and getting in front of those problems with a good attitude before they're even encountered and that's what will make our children successful so it's really really important that I share these thoughts with you and some of the research I've done and um, some tips on maybe how you can incorporate it into your home school or how you can supplement it um, if your children are in public school which is especially crucial because in modern education today and for you homeschoolers um, you can relate to this. This may be one of the reasons you may have pulled your child out of out of public school or private school or whatever it may be. Um, what you find in a typical classroom is you have this 
this line of neurotypical kids who um, do well, they do, they do excellent, they, they meet the standards that are expected of them, they coast along, they do well on standardized tests, which is what, what the public education system wants. Um, it's all centered around the, the, the tests. Um, and then beyond that line of ch children who are coasting along, um, you have a wide differential. You, so you have children who are under that line and are not meeting expectations, um, who need maybe a little bit more time or a little bit more help or need to develop those skills. They're getting left behind, um, obviously, because we're all focused on that that middle line and, and meeting um, meeting standards. And then on the other, on the flip side of that, you have the children who are up here and who are um, overperforming or or have the capability to overperform, but are just here because that's all that's expected of them. They're not pushed. They're not challenged. They're not. There's nothing for them beyond this line. When they get up here, um, you start encountering maybe problems similar to to what we experience, which is boredom. And uh, <laughs> we all know a bored child um, is a recipe for disaster because when they're bored. Um, they push limits, they push boundaries, and that's actually a good thing. Uh, so in the public school system setting, um, this is now a hot trend with problem solving, and you're, we're starting to see um, companies come in. Um, you know, you got the big names, you've got Microsoft, Apple, you know, they see the need for this. They want to develop this workforce and, and develop the skills needed for their companies. Um, and you're also seeing a push from, from teachers to, to supplement uh, whatever materials it is that may be keeping them here. So we're starting to see it, um, but as always, you know, there's challenges in the public school system that, that go way beyond um, just giving bored kids uh, extra stuff to do to keep them their brains healthy and, and, and constantly moving on. So that's that could be a whole separate video. Um, it again, most of you are here because you want more for your child. Want want more for your children. Really, bottom line, um, that that system wasn't working for you. Whether it was because your child was here and not being challenged, or it was because your child was here and wasn't getting what they needed, or even if they were just here and you were like, mm, "This is, I don't want my child to just be average, to just coast." Whatever your reasons for homeschooling may be, and whatever your reasons for pulling them may be. Um, you know, that's your story, um, but it's also an opportunity for you uh, to, to challenge your children. And that's what I'm gonna talk more about today. How do we, how do we incorporate this, this problem solving mentality? How do you foster that? How do you encourage that? Um, and there's different ways you can do it. So um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that, uh, some ways you can incorporate that. I'm gonna also follow up this rambling video with, uh, with a, a written piece with some of the research I've done, um, which may be a little bit more articulate and to the point, which I tend to, tend to lack on video. Um, so anyway, so again, growth mindset and philosophy are a very good segue into problem solving. Uh, if you have read my piece on growth mindset, it is all about um, encountering challenges and and having the mentality that it, it's not necessarily a challenge and that it can be accomplished if you break it down into smaller steps. And problem solving is very, very similar in that. Uh, it's encountering a challenge and working really hard at it, breaking it down into smaller steps uh, to, to solve that problem. And then as you, as you grow, as you progress, constantly getting harder and harder, challenge, more challenging problems so that your growth continues. It's a muscle. Um, growth, growth mindset, problem solving, it is a muscle you need to work every day. Uh, and if you saw my piece on um, growth mindset, you, you know that I'm, it's not, I'm, you know, I'm not a mouthpiece here. I'm living it. You know, I literally just got back from the gym, which is why I'm like this. Um, that growth mindset or that problem solving ability. I, there was a goal I had, I broke it down into smaller steps. And one of those steps is to constantly exercise those muscles so that I can achieve 
my big goal. It's it's doing the daily work um, to to get myself to the next level. So just like uh, physical fitness and using your muscles to exercise, your brain needs to be exercised uh, daily, and and there are ways that you can do that. So one of the one of the big things, and you know, I love I've done a review on it. You know I love Beast Academy and the Art of Problem Solving. I cannot say enough about them. So as I start my research, um, that's obviously where I start. You type in problem solving and the Art of Problem Solving comes up, which is great. And I, so I start to listen to these, um, I don't even know what the word, I, I guess speeches. Um, the, the owner and founder, Richard Ruzik, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm terrible with names. Terrible with pronunciation of names. I hate butchering butchering people's names, but I do believe it's Richard Rusick. Um, so he talks about this this idea, not only of the public school system being um, catered to that that middle average line, and there no there not being many opportunities for children up here. He also talks about his high school being aggressively average, um, which not only makes me laugh, but I can relate. Um, and I'm sure many of you can too. Uh, nobody wants aggressively average. Nobody wants their kids to be aggressively average. Um, I know I sure don't. Um, and I, in order to get beyond that aggressively average stage or that aggressively average mentality, um, you need to, you need challenges. And whether that comes in the form of um, math competitions or you know reading in the next level up in reading uh, when it may not be their approved reading level, whatever that may be, um, there's work that goes into being more than aggressively average. Uh, and that work is crucial. It, it, it is, um, I don't even know the best way to say it. You are doing yourself and your children a disservice if you are not constantly challenging them. Because from that challenge, from that adversity, from constantly not being able to coast and having to really dig into things, um, you're, you're taking that opportunity away from them to, to grow and to mature and to build self-confidence and to build um, beyond just literacy and whatever it is that you're doing, mastery. You wanna go beyond just understanding something or being able to repeat back something to actually understanding it and being able to apply it to to a different problem or something that may not even be in what you're currently studying those skills are then transferable to whatever it may be that mindset that growth mindset um, it makes a problem or a challenge then more of a puzzle it becomes more fun and that's something I'm learning as I'm going with lovey especially perfect example. Um, when we first started, I've mentioned this before, her perfectionist tendencies would drive me insane because she was so used to coasting. She was so, so used to coasting. And that's what they're seeing out there is all of these kids are just so used to coasting and just meeting expectations that are set for them and not being challenged that when they actually are, they tailspin because they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do with themselves when they are confronted with the possibility that they might fail. Um, they internalize it, they they start to stress out that it's them, no, it's not. It, it's that they haven't been given the skills needed um, to, to instead of being scared of failing, of, of actually enjoying that failure and realizing that that failure or whatever, or getting the answer wrong is gonna lead you to the right answer. Um, and that is critical at a young age. The younger, the better. Um, that failure is not failure. It is just a stepping stone into getting the right answer or figuring the problem out. Um, you know, you look back into the, the famous inventors of the world, um, Einstein. Einstein, I believe, dropped out of school. Um, he was famous for saying that his failures made fit him for made him who he is, and that's so true. And anyone you encounter, any of those big names that you hear in you know Silicon Valley, you know Steve Jobs, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, um, oh god, the guy from Tesla, I can't think of his name, Elon Musk. Um, they, if you read their autobiographies, they're chock full of all of their failures and they relate those failures because they're problem solvers and they realize that those weren't 
you know, failures. They were stepping stones to the greatness that they have achieved today. And that's putting that in front of your kids and putting those stories in front of your kids um, is not only helpful, but it, it makes them realize that I can do great things, maybe not right now, but I can work on it and get there. Um, so this math problem that's really super hard, you know, it's a puzzle. And once I get past this puzzle, I'm gonna know what to do next time. Um, so by working that daily, you, you go past that computing and that just basic literacy into mastery, um, not only of the subject, but of themselves. Um, and that's critical. So <clears throat> we wanna encourage computing, uh, I'm sorry, encourage thinking over computing and just rattling off facts and figures and cramming your kids' heads full of, of facts they need to memorize um, and actually thinking about things. Um, so that's, that's very, very important, whether you are a homeschool parent, uh, just doing your, do, doing your thing daily with your kids, um, or whether you have kids in the public school system currently and you can tell they are not being challenged or, you know, the, the reward is just for doing what is expected and nothing more, um, challenge your kids. And there's ways you can do that, and I'll share that at the end of the video and in the written piece I'm going to follow this up with. So... In order to strengthen those skills to fight through harder challenges, building confidence, and I'm looking at my notes, <laughs> um, resilience and perseverance, you, you want those qualities in your children and the only way you're going to develop them um, is by constantly raising that bar and, and pushing them. Um, and not in a mean way. With some, Sometimes homeschoolers get a bad rep that we push our kids too hard and we're too, you know, crack the whip. And um, don't you think that's a little, um, Somebody said this once to me. Don't you think that's, I don't even remember how it was said, but it was something along the lines of, um, don't you think that's a little excessive or something to that effect? And I was kind of like, mm, no, I don't think that's too excessive because she's either gonna rise up and meet the challenge or um, it is gonna be too hard and we're just gonna find the steps necessary for her to figure that out. You know, uh, Latin, Latin was a big thing. Um, I got a lot of comments about Latin, why that was, why that was a choice. Um, it's a choice because readers um, and people that understand the English language um, are better problem solvers, and and there are sto there are, um, studies that that corroborate that. Um, reading, make your kids read, or not even make your kids read. Um, put things in front of them that they enjoy, that where they want to read harder things. Uh, one of my daughter's biggest frustrations when she was in public school was that she could read beyond what level, Lexile, whatever I don't I don't know what it's called, some level LM whatever um, they wouldn't let her read books beyond that and she was so frustrated by that um, not being able to read something that was a little bit harder uh, I think at the time it was Harry Potter and her her teacher was like no you can't read that and I was like uh, yeah yeah you can go read that at home um, so it, it's putting things in front of your children that um, maybe will be a little bit beyond their abilities and that's good because they will rise to that expectation and they may even want that. They may be pushing for that without you really even um, realizing it at the time. They may be bored. You don't know. If you're coasting along in whatever, whatever curriculum you're in, it's time to raise the bar um, and it's time to challenge them because coasting is not problem solving. They know the material. They're, they're meeting expectations. It may feel like a win. It may feel like a victory. That should be a cue to you as an educator um, to to kind of switch switch it up a little bit and put something in front of them that may make them cry. Um, like I said in the beginning, I was it used to freak me out when she would cry and get frustrated um, at a problem, a math problem, whatever. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, we've we got to fix these perfectionist tendencies. And I realized the solution was in the problem um, of actually making her cry with math problems because after solving those harder math problems, there was the reward was solving it. it she didn't need any external reward she didn't need a good pat on the back because she had that inner self um motivation or not even motivation she she felt good that she was able to tackle something that was in front of her that intimidated her and challenged her and she didn't know and she was going to fail at um 
It took her a couple times. It took me a couple times to get over the, oh my God, my kid is crying be, over math, um, with this harder math problem. And I second guessed myself. And then again, I realized mm -mm, that there, there's your growth mindset. There's your problem solving capabilities. Those failures are going to make her great. And she's now come to realize that. And you know, when we see those one or two starred problems, they're not quite the dramatic scene they used to be, um, which is nice. So as far as problem solving, if you want to incorporate this into your home, in your own home, whether it may through be through homeschooling or if you're a public school parent looking to enrich. So there's, from the homeschooling side, like I said, I cannot recommend Beast Academy or, or Art of Problem Solving enough. If your children are coasting along in their current math problem, incorporate problem solving curriculum, whether that be through math and, and art of problem solving or Beast Academy, or whether it just be like a legit problem solving book, put it in front of them. Um, those puzzles, those, and they tell um, seniors to do this all the time, to, to improve their mental acuity, to do puzzles. It's, his, it's historically and scientifically proven that these puzzles work your brain and not only, I can't remember the diseases off the top of my head, I wanna say Alzheimer's or something else, but my great grandmother, until the day she died at 94, always used to have a puzzle book in front of her, a crossword puzzle or Sudoku or whatever it may be, she always had something in front of her. And let me tell you, that woman at 94 had better mental acuity than any of us. So that works. So do that, incorporate that. Um, another thing, coding. Coding is so huge. And I'm gonna refer back to Richard Rusick again and his, his talk. Um, companies, what they're looking for is programmers. Programmers are the wave of the future. Computers are going to replace people's jobs. If your children can talk to a computer and, and be in, in the driver's seat, essentially, of what is the future, um, they will never be without a job. They will never be without, um, you know, a steady paycheck and the ability to do better. Good programmers, really good programmers, those are the ones that are are creating our world right now. Um, the apps, the games they play, anything. Um, coding and computer science is huge. And I've heard, I've read articles that no, you know, that's everybody's doing it. No, it, teach it like another language. And that's what we're doing. Um, you know, they have coding apps on their, on their iPads. They have coding apps on our um, laptops. Uh, they're just little things. I've looked into some coding um, boxes, which I'm gonna share with you when they come in. Coding, um, I'm actually trying to teach myself with them because why not? <laughs> it's one more thing in my in my toolbox that I can use, and it's it's a big skill in their toolbox that is not only fun um, because through the games and whatnot they have now to teach these kids how to learn all of these computer languages, um, it is it is going to serve them well in the future. And those skills in coding are problem solving, straight up. That's that's what problem solving is. It's it, or coding is. It's problem solving and how to tell the computer to do what you want it to do, um, or how to work around an issue or whatever it may be. Um, I digress, but um, incorporate coding. And if you are completely saturated with subjects, that's fine. Do it as a unit. Do it as a um, oh, in the summer we'll do this for fun. Um, you know, however you want to incorporate it. They have coding camps now. Uh, I can't think of the name of. They just opened one. Uh, like two towns over from us, but like an actual legit coding building uh, that I looked into. Um, so the opportunities are out there and that's another thing you see right now with the big push with these companies bringing into the public school system, computer sciences and, uh, com sorry, computer science and coding. Um, not fast enough, unfortunately. Um, it's now become a thing. Um, hopefully they're, the companies that are supporting these will get it to more children at a younger age. Um, so we're not seeing quite that that disparity in, in a, the problem solvers versus the not problem solvers. Um, growth mindset. <laughs> uh, like I said, the, the, the two are so intertwined, it's scary. Um, they're pretty much the same thing. 
growth mindset is problem solving. Um, big life journal, if you don't wanna do big life journal, if you wanna just kinda of look it up online and, and what is actually growth mindset, I wrote a piece about it. There's some really cool uh, materials you can use to incorporate a growth mindset. It has worked for me. As an adult, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Um, maybe I've always had growth mindset, I don't know. I'd like to think I do. Um, you know, I, I got early acceptance in college at 16, so I guess that seed had been planted. Um, my grandfather was always all about tinkering and, and figuring things out, so I think I might have had, a, have had an edge in the, the people around me and what they put in front of me um, to never really see um, a problem, rather to see a challenge to work around. Um, you know, some of my friends, my personal motto and I get made fun of this, it's like a legit, a personal motto is, I will either find a way or I will make one. And anybody that knows me personally um, knows this to be true, especially my poor husband. Um, if I want something, I if I can't get it, I will find a way to get it. And that's, that's growth mindset, that is problem solving. Um, I will either find a way or I will make one. And uh, rather than getting beat down by life's challenges and and unfortunate events that may happen to you, either to your children or to yourself, um, having that that thought process that this is just a bump in the road that I need to get over to get to the next step has served me well in life. And um, by using, using an actual program to teach these steps to me, I was able to accomplish a personal goal that had you met me six months ago, I would have never even thought possible um, and here I am I accomplished my goal I proved something not only to myself but showed my children that it works so growth mindset pick that up by all means um, check out my my page uh, check out big life journal there's some really 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 good stuff as far as growth mindset uh, another thing is let your kids struggle let just back off for a sec if you see them struggling don't don't let your don't let the tears and the hysterics you know get to you just sit back and give them a couple minutes to work through it and I have had to teach myself that because I was always so quick um, to, to get in there and how can I help and you know how do we do this and not necessarily solve it for them but give them ideas on how to solve it and it wasn't necessary if I just backed off and let them struggle they they find their way. Uh, it may be super dramatic and funny and a little painful, but they, children are resourceful and smart and given the opportunities to just figure things out, they're really good at it. I mean, you think about little kids, they have to figure everything out. Um, you know, walking, talking, all of it, they, they're really good at it. So my one step I have struggled with still is as a homeschooling parent or a parent in general, back off and give them a second to just or a couple minutes to figure it out and then at that point then maybe step in and there's there's um there's actually a list of problem solving like how to solve a problem um, which I'll go through in a minute it's online you can find it and I will include it in my article um, but I'll also touch on it in the video quick I'm trying not to make this too long um, another thing let them play let them especially okay so if you have older cho older children in high school, guard their time, let them tinker, let them find things that excite them. Because if they find things that excite them, they are more driven to not only pursue it, but, but those challenges created by something that they enjoy um, aren't really as difficult as challenges. Because if you're invested in learning something it, and you're happy doing it, um, it's just an easier process than something that they're not interested in. So if you have old, older children, um, maybe maybe pull some sub, some subjects back, maybe pull back some of the socialization or um, you know whatever extracurriculars, give them the time to figure out who they are and what they like. Um, if they're younger, give them time to play because again, that's how they explore. That's how I learned as a kid. Um, funny family joke, my. My grandpa, my, gr my grumpy, used to let me and my little cousin at seven, eight, whatever, um, play with power tools. And I'm sure it drove my mom insane. But um, being given adult 
uh, opportunities to play and learn and create and explore uh, probably turned me into a different a different adult than I would have been had I not had those opportunities. So I'm not saying give your children, you know, maybe a chainsaw, but but uh, give them time to play. And um, somebody in co-op gave me a quote the other day. It was awesome. It was something like, um, something learned regularly. It takes 30 attempts to, to learn it. Um, but if they're doing it through play, they only have to do it five times for, for the neural pathways to, to remember that. Don't quote me, but it was something to that effect. And it's true. If you enjoy something, if you're playing, if you're learning on your own terms, you learn quickly uh, or you learn more quickly than something you may not be interested in. Not saying get rid of your reading and your math and whatever they're not interested in. Uh, still challenge them with the harder stuff, but protect their time, protect their their interests, and give them the freedom to explore those. And it's amazing how quickly you'll see that problem solving blossom. Um, I have a friend whose son uh, is in rocket science. Uh, I do believe he works for SpaceX. Um, back to Tesla and uh, Mr. Musk. Um, but it was because she used to let him play with rockets. That was his, that was his passion. And, um, I'm sure he didn't learn how to build rockets in a day, but that passion combined with problem solving abilities. And he is now working for, uh, one of the top leaders in, uh, technology today. And we all know, you know, Tesla is, so again, just a relatable example. Um, so Another thing, back to philosophy, um, encourage the whys and the hows behind things. Those whys, my kids ask me why 50 million times a day and your natural parenting instinct is to just be like, oh, I, I can't, I can't anymore, I literally can't. But encourage it. The hows and the whys of things are, and what, make th what makes things tick um, will promote that problem solving mindset to instead of just being told what to do kids that are told what to do and and do it they're great kids there's nothing wrong with a child that is told what to do and does it and just goes on their merry way um you know I'm, employers today i'm sure would love that but but that's not going to bring them to the next level In, encourage to a certain extent the hows and the whys and the maybe challenging of authority to, to some extent. Obviously you want them to, you know, be polite and, and all of those things, but but challenge them to, to challenge the status quo. Uh, encourage that, um, do it yourself to some extent. Why, why, why is this new tax here? And, and ha hear, have them hear you discussing the hows and whys of things. Um, they're important. They're very, very important um, to just blindly accept what is being told to you and fed to you um, does not make you a thinker. It makes you a processor. And um, processors probably don't have much of a place in, in our future. Um, it is the problem solvers that will, will pave the way for whatever cool new technology or, or whatever the future holds. Um, so encourage, encourage it a tiny bit. Um, I struggle with it. My daughter challenges me at every opportunity and it is very, very hard not to want to, to just squish that a little bit. Um, but I have to remind myself that, that that passion, that drive, that insatiable curiosity is what is going to make her great. Um, not good. <laughs> But great because at the time that she's challenging me um, she may be driving me nuts but it's she's strengthening her ability to not only problem solve but also pitch um, and and express or advocate advocate for her own personal ideas so valuable life skill well it may be tough to take as a parent as an educator I want that for her um, so we touched on puzzles, books, games. Mensa has some great stuff, Mensa for kids. Um, now that is not to, so I keep talking about problem solving and not rote memorization. Um, I wanna circle back to that for a quick second. Rote memorization has its role. Um, 
It absolutely does. You still need to memorize some facts. So don't, please don't think that I'm knocking that because we utilize memorization in our homeschool through poetry. Um, obviously, you know, times tables, when you're teaching those very basic skills, little dude, you know, th you need some memorization. But the problem is, is that all of these facts and all of these things that kids are being forced to memorize, um, everybody has a cell phone, everybody has Google, anybody can Google anything. I, I Google stuff all the time and you know, I can get the same information as somebody that has a PhD in um, physics if, if I know how to Google right, you know, I can teach that to myself. Um, so learning all of these random facts and not how to process them or use them it is kind of counterproductive. So don't, please don't think I'm knocking um, memorization um, or being proficient and, and literate in something. It's just a matter of going beyond that literacy into mastery. So that's what I'm promoting, not necessarily knocking um, memorization. So again, back to Mensa. Mensa has some great poems that you can memorize and um, utilize websites. They're there. Problem solving websites are popping up all over. I'm gonna refer back to Beast Academy again. Uh, Beast Academy has an online um, <clears throat> math program Prodigy, Prodigy is a, a problem solving thing. They have to solve the problem to get to the next step. So they are out there. There's little ways you can incorporate it, however you choose. Um, lastly, community. Um, community is important. And again, I wanna thank Richard Ruzik, sorry, Richard Ruzik for mentioning this. Community is important. Get your kids around other kids that are smarter than them, that are challenging them, that are, are doing things, even if it's just at their higher level of, of Fortnite, you know, small, small baby steps. Get them around kids that are smarter than them because those, those kids that are smarter than them will pull your children with them. And to have a community that is focused on problem solving and, and having like-minded people around will encourage your kids to, to want to be the same. If they're around other aggressively average people, that's the standard. That's the standard they're going to meet. So build a community, find a community, get them into, um, I think there's robotics classes. There's obviously the math competitions. Now with the, the coding, there's coding classes. So get, get them to where that growth is already happening and it will happen organically um, with your kids. Um, so that's that's kind of my long rant about problem solving. I'm sorry for being all over the place, but it's so crucial. I will write a piece on it that will be more articulate and have some backup resources that you can go to. But really, I just wanted to kind of get those thoughts out there and, and mention it to you along with, you know, philosophy is super important. Make sure your kids are reading, reading good stuff, put good stuff in front of them, not the fluff. Um, Fluff has its place every once in a while. You know, I'll give my kids some fluff to read, just to chill and enjoy reading. Um, but but put good reading stuff in front of them. Um, the classics, you know, whatever whatever it may be. I'm a classical homeschooler, so I'm big on the on the great books. Um, but fluff has its place, but it's not gonna it's not gonna push them higher. It's not gonna teach them new vocabulary words or how to figure out what that new vocabulary word is that they don't understand. Um, so so create, create opportunities for challenge and adversity because that's where your children will grow the most um, without you really having to even do anything. It, it's in them, it's innate. They, children are innate problem solvers and if they can keep that up from childhood and have that same mindset all the way through, whether you're in public school or you homeschool, um, just constantly exercising that muscle of, of, of adversity and challenge um, that creates problem solvers. So I'm going to sign off for now. Um, I have more wrapping to do. Um, and also I, I will write that piece. If you have any questions or concerns or if you're currently utilizing problem solving in your own homeschool or you know of uh, if your child's in public school, if they're incorporating it, please drop a comment below. This stuff really intrigues me and I want to find out more. Um, so f first, uh, you know, your stories um, 
are really important to me because it, it lets me know that this isn't just an isolated uh, experience I'm having in the homeschool world. I'm curious to know if, if there are programs in, in the public school that are being utilized right now to incorporate problem solving. Um, if you're a homeschooler and you have any questions or wondering, you know, any specific examples of how we use problem solving in our homeschool, drop a comment below. As always, please like and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate the support. Again, I have some really cool stuff coming up, guys. Lots of fun contests, free giveaways, lots of cool stuff coming up in 2019. So I will try to be more consistent with the content. We'll see. Uh, stay right here, like and subscribe so you don't miss anything cool. Thanks again and have a great day.